Bharatanatyam Tamil, Paratanatyam, also historically called Sadir, is a major genre of Indian classical dance that originated in Tamil Nadu. Traditionally, Bharatanatyam has been a solo dance that was performed exclusively by women, and it expressed South Indian religious themes and spiritual ideas, particularly of Shaivism, Vaishnavism, and Shaktism. Bharatanatyam's theoretical foundations trace to the ancient Sanskrit text by Bharata Muni, Natya Shastra. Its existence by 2nd century CE is noted in the ancient Tamil epic Salapadikaram, while temple sculptures of 6th to 9th century CE suggest it was a well refined performance art by mid 1st millennium CE. Bharatanatyam may be the oldest classical dance tradition of India. Bharatanatyam style is noted for its fixed upper torso, legs bent or knees flexed out combined with spectacular footwork, a sophisticated vocabulary of sign language based on gestures of hands, eyes and face muscles. The dance is accompanied by music and a singer, and typically her guru is present as the director and conductor of the performance and art. The dance has traditionally been a form of an interpretive narration of mythical legends and spiritual ideas from the Hindu texts. The performance repertoire of Bharatanatyam, like other classical dances, includes N Rita, pure dance, N Ritya, solo expressive dance, and Natya, group dramatic dance. Bharatanatyam remained exclusive to Hindu temples through the 19th century. It was banned by the colonial British government in 1910, but the Indian community protested against the ban and expanded it outside the temples in the 20th century. Modern stage productions of Bharatanatyam have incorporated technical performances, pure dance based on non-religious ideas and fusion themes. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The term Bharatanatyam is a compound of two words, Bharata and Natyam. The term Bharata is believed to be named after the famous performance art sage to whom the ancient Natya Shastra is attributed. There is an alternative belief that the word Bharata is a mnemonic, consisting of BHA, RA, TA. According to this belief, BHA stands for bhava feelings, emotions, RA stands for raga melody, framework for musical notes, and TA stands for tala rhythm. The term natya is a Sanskrit word for dance. The compound word Bharatanatyam would thus connote a dance which harmoniously expresses bhava, raga and tala. In its history, Bharatanatyam has also been called sadir. History The theoretical foundations of Bharatanatyam are found in Natya Shastra, the ancient Hindu text of performance arts. Natya Shastra is attributed to the ancient scholar Bharata Muni, and its first complete compilation is dated to between 200 BCE and 200 CE, but estimates vary between 500 BCE and 500 CE. The most studied version of the Natya Shastra text consists of about 6,000 verses structured into 36 chapters. The text, states Natalia Lidova, describes the theory of Tandava dance Shiva, the theory of rasa, of bhava, expression, gestures, acting techniques, basic steps, standing postures, all of which are part of Indian classical dances. Dance and performance arts, states this ancient text, are a form of expression of spiritual ideas, virtues, and the essence of scriptures. More direct historical references to Bharatnatyam is found in the Tamil epic Salapadikaram and Manamegalai. The ancient text Salapadikaram includes a story of a dancing girl named Madhavi. It describes the dance training regimen called Arangatrau Kathai of Madhavi in verses 113 through 159. The carvings in Kanchipuram's Shiva temple that have been dated to 6th to 9th century CE suggest Bharatanatyam was a well-developed performance art by about the mid-1st millennium CE. A famous example of illustrative sculpture is in the southern gateway of the Chidambaram temple tilde 12th century dedicated to Hindu god Shiva, where 108 poses of the Bharatanatyam, that are also described as Kuranas in the Natya Shastra, are carved in stone. Many of the ancient Shiva sculptures in Hindu temples are same as the Bharatanatyam dance poses. For example, the Cave 1 of Badami Cave temples, dated to 7th century, portrays the Tandava dancing Shiva as Nataraja. The image, 5 feet meters tall, has 18 arms in a form that expresses the dance positions arranged in a geometric pattern. The arms of Shiva express mudras symbolic hand gestures, that are found in Bharatanatyam. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Devadasis, anti-dance movement, colonial ban and the decline. Some colonial Indologists and modern authors have stated Bharatanatyam is a descendant of an ancient Devadasi literally, servant girls of Deva temples culture, suggesting historical origins to 300 BCE to 300 CE. Modern scholarship has questioned this theory for lack of any direct textual or archaeological evidence. Historic sculpture and texts do describe and project dancing girls, as well as temple quarters dedicated to women, but they do not state them to be courtesans and prostitutes as alleged by early colonial Indologists. According to Davish Sanaji, a critical examination of evidence suggests that courtesan dancing is a phenomenon of the modern era, beginning in the late 16th or the 17th century of the Nayaka period of Tamil Nadu. According to James Lochtefeld, Bharatanatyam remained exclusive to Hindu temples through the 19th century, and it appeared on stage outside the temples only in the 20th century. Further, the Maratha rulers of Tanjore patronized and contributed towards Bharatanatyam. With the arrival of colonial East India Company officials rule in the 18th century, and the establishment of British colonial rule in the 19th, many classical Indian dance forms were ridiculed and discouraged, and these performance arts declined. Christian missionaries and British officials presented Nosh girls of North India Catholic and Devadasis of South India Bharatanatyam as evidence of harlots, debased erotic culture, slavery to idols and priests. Tradition, and Christian missionaries demanded that this must be stopped, launching the anti-dance movement in 1892. The anti-dance camp accused the dance form as a front for prostitution, while revivalists questioned the constructed histories by the colonial writers. In 1910, the Madras Presidency of the British Empire altogether banned temple dancing, and with it the Bharatanatyam tradition within Hindu temples. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Post-colonial revival. The 1910 ban triggered powerful protests against the stereotyping and dehumanization of temple dancers. The Tamil people were concerned that a historic and rich dance tradition was being victimized under the excuse of social reform. The classical art revivalists such as E. Krishna Iyer, a lawyer and someone who had learnt the Bharatanatyam dance, questioned the cultural discrimination and the assumed connection, asking why prostitution needs years of learning and training for performance arts such as the Bharatanatyam, and how can killing performance arts end any evils in a society? Iyer was arrested and sentenced to prison on charges of nationalism, who while serving out his prison term persuaded his fellow political prisoners to support Bharatanatyam, while the British colonial government enforced laws to suppress Bharatanatyam and all Hindu temple dances. Some from the West such as the American dancer Esther Sherman moved to India in 1930, learnt Indian classical dances, changed her name to Ragini Devi, and joined the movement to save and revive Bharatanatyam and other ancient dance arts. The Indian independence movement in early 20th century, already in progress, became a period of cultural ferment and initiated an effort by its people to reclaim their culture and rediscover history. In this period of cultural and political turmoil, instead of Bharatanatyam becoming extinct, it expanded out of Hindu temples and was revived as a mainstream dance by Bharatanatyam artists such as Rukmini Devi Arundale and Balasaraswati. They championed and performed the Pandandalar and Thanjavur styles of Bharatanatyam, respectively. In late 20th century, Tamil Hindu migrants reintroduced the Bharatanatyam traditions of temple dancing in British Tamil temples. Repertoire <repertoire> Bharata Natyam is traditionally a team performance art that consists of a female solo dancer, accompanied by musicians and one or more singers. The theory behind the musical notes, vocal performance and the dance movement trace back to the ancient Natya Shastra, and many Sanskrit and Tamil texts such as the Abhinaya Darpana, the solo artist Akaharya in Bharata Natyam is dressed in a colorful sari, adorned with jewelry who presents a dance synchronized with Indian classical music. Her hand and facial gestures are codified sign language that recite a legend, spiritual ideas, or a religious prayer derived from Hindu Vedic scriptures, the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, the Puranas, and historic drama texts. The dancer deploys turns or specific body movements to mark punctuations in the story or the entry of a different character in the play or legend being acted out through dance. 
The footwork, body language, postures, musical notes, the tones of the vocalist, aesthetics and costumes integrate to express and communicate the underlying text. In modern adaptations, Bharata Natyam dance troupes may involve many dancers which play specific characters of a story, creatively choreographed to ease the interpretation and expand the experience by the audience. The repertoire of Bharata Natyam, like all major classical Indian dance forms, follows the three categories of performance in the Natya Shastra. These are Nritta Narutham, Nritya Narutham, and Natya Natyam. The Nritta performance is abstract, fast and rhythmic aspect of the dance. The viewer is presented with pure movement in Bharata Natyam, wherein the emphasis is the beauty in motion, form, speed, range and pattern. This part of the repertoire has no interpretive aspect, no telling of story. It is a technical performance, and aims to engage the senses of the audience. The enritya is slower and expressive aspect of the dance that attempts to communicate feelings, storyline particularly with spiritual themes in Hindu dance traditions. In a enritya, the dance acting expands to include silent expression of words through gestures and body motion set to musical notes. The actor articulates a legend or a spiritual message. This part of a Bharatanatyam repertoire is more than sensory enjoyment, it aims to engage the emotions and mind of the viewer. The Natyam is a play, typically a team performance, but can be acted out by a solo performer where the dancer uses certain standardized body movements to indicate a new character in the underlying story. A Natya incorporates the elements of a Enritya. Sequence <inaudible> 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 The traditional Bharatanatyam performance follows a seven-part order of presentation. This set is called Marjam. Alaripu The presentation begins with a rhythmic invocation Vandana called the Alaripu. It is a pure dance, which combines a thank you and benediction for blessings from the gods and goddesses, the guru and the gathered performance team. It also serves as a preliminary warm-up dance, without melody, to enable to dancer to loosen her body, journey away from distractions and towards single-minded focus. <laughs> Jatiswaram The next stage of the performance adds melody to the movement of Alaripu, and this is called Jatiswaram. The dance remains a prelim technical performance en rita, pure in form and without any expressed words. The drums set the beat, of any Carnatic music raga melody. She performs a sequence korvai to the rhythm of the beat, presenting to the audience the unity of music, rhythm and movements. <laughs> Shabdam The performance sequence then adds shabdam expressed words. The solo dancer, the vocalists and the musical team, in this stage of the production, present short compositions, with words and meaning, in a spectrum of moods. <laughs> Varnam The performance thereafter evolves into the Varnam stage. This marks the arrival into the Sanctum Sanctorum core of the performance. It is the longest section and the Enritya. A traditional Varnam may be as long as 30 to 45 minutes or sometimes an hour. Varnam offer huge scope for improvisation and an experienced dancer can stretch the Varnam to a desirable length. The artist presents the play or the main composition, reveling in all her movements, silently communicating the text through codified gestures and footwork, harmoniously with the music, rhythmically punctuated. The dancer performs complicated moves, such as expressing a verse at two speeds. Her hands and body tell a story, whether of love and longing, or of a battle between the good and the evil, as the musicians envelop her with musical notes and tones that set the appropriate mood. <laughs> padam The Padam is next. This is the stage of reverence, of simplicity, of abhinaya expression of the solemn spiritual message or devotional religious prayer bhakti. The music is lighter, the chant intimate, the dance emotional. The choreography attempts to express rasa emotional taste and a mood, while the recital may include items such as a kirthanam expressing devotion, a javali expressing divine love or something else. 
Topic: Thalana. The performance sequence ends with a Thalana, the climax. It closes out the Enritya portion. The movements exit the temple of expressive dance, returning to the Enritya style, where a series of pure movement and music are rhythmically performed. Therewith, the performance ends. Topic: <laughs> Slokam or Mangalam. The seventh and final item in the sequence can be either a slokam or a mangalam. The dancer calls for blessings on the people all around. The overall sequence of Bharatanatyam, states Balasaraswati, thus moves from mere meter, then melody and meter, continuing with music, meaning and meter, its expansion in the centerpiece of the Varnam, thereafter, music and meaning without meter. a non metrical song at the end. We see a most wonderful completeness and symmetry in this art. Topic: Attire. The attires of a Bharatanatyam dancer resembles a Tamil Hindu's bridal dress. It consists of a tailor fitted brilliantly colored sari with a special pleated cloth stitched that falls in front and opens like a hand fan when she flexes her knees or performs footwork. The sari is worn in a special way, wrapping the back and body contour tightly, past one shoulder and its end then held by a jewelry belt at the waist. She is typically adorned with jewelry, outlining her head or hair, on ear, nose and neck. Her face has conventional makeup, eyes lined and ringed by collyrium which help viewers see her eye expressions. To her ankles, she wraps one or more leather anklets gungrus. Her hair is tied up in the traditional way, often braided in with fragrant flowers Beni or gajra. .The fingers and feet outlines may be partially colored red with kumkum powder, a costume tradition that helps the audience more easily view her hand gestures. <laughs> <laughs> Vocal aspects and musical instruments The accompanying music to Bharatanatyam is in the Carnatic style of South India, as is the recitation and chanting. The vocalist is called the Natuvanar, typically also the conductor of the entire performance, who may be the guru of the dancer and may also be playing cymbals or one of the musical instruments. The recited verses and text in Bharatanatyam are in Tamil, Telugu, Kannada and Sanskrit. The instruments used include the murdangam, double-sided drum, nadaswaram, long type of oboe made from a black wood, natavangam, cymbals, the flute, violin and veena. Topic: <laughs> Symbolism Bharatanatyam, like all classical dances of India, is steeped in symbolism both in its abhinaya acting and its goals. The roots of abhinaya are found in the Natyashastra text which defines drama in verse 6.10 as that which aesthetically arouses joy in the spectator, through the medium of actor's art of communication, that helps connect and transport the individual into a super-sensual inner state of being. A performance art, asserts Natyashastra, connects the artists and the audience through abhinaya literally carrying to the spectators, that is applying body speech mind and scene, wherein the actors communicate to the audience, through song and music. Drama in this ancient Sanskrit text, thus is an art to engage every aspect of life, in order to glorify and gift a state of joyful consciousness. The communication through symbols is in the form of expressive gestures and pantomime set to music. The gestures and facial expressions convey the ras sentiment, emotional taste and bhava mood of the underlying story. In the Hindu texts on dance, the dancer successfully expresses the spiritual ideas by paying attention to four aspects of a performance, angika gestures and body language, vachika song, recitation, music and rhythm, aharya stage setting, costume, makeup, jewelry, and sattvika artists' mental disposition and emotional connection with the story and audience, wherein the artist's inner and outer state resonates. Abhinaya draws out the bhava mood, psychological states. The gestures used in Bharatanatyam are called asta or mudras. These symbols are of three types: asamuta hastas, single hand gestures; samuta hastas, two hand gestures; and nrtta hastas, dance hand gestures. Like words in a glossary, these gestures are presented in the enrita as a list or embellishment to a prelim performance. In Enritya stage of Bharatanatyam, these symbols set in a certain sequence become sentences with meaning, with emotions expressed through facial expressions and other aspects of abhinaya. Topic: 
Topic: <laughs> Modern Revival, Schools and Training Centers. Bharatanatyam rapidly expanded after India gained freedom from the British rule in 1947. It is now the most popular classical Indian dance style in India, enjoys high degree of support in expatriate Indian communities, and is considered to be synonymous with Indian dance by many foreigners unaware of the diversity of dances and performance arts in Indian culture. In the second half of the 20th century, Bharatanatyam has been to Indian dance tradition what ballet has been in the West. When the British tried to attempt to banish Bharatanatyam traditions, it went on and revived by moving outside the Hindu temple and religious ideas. However, post independence, with rising interest in its history, the ancient traditions, the invocation rituals, and the spiritual expressive part of the dance has returned. Many innovations and developments in modern Bharatanatyam, states Anne Marie Geston, are of a quasi religious type. Major cities in India now have numerous schools that offer lessons in Bharatanatyam, and these cities host hundreds of shows every year. Outside India, Bharatanatyam is a sought after and studied dance, states Madhuri, in academic institutes in the United States, Europe, Canada, Australia, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, and Singapore. For expat Indian and Tamil communities in many countries, it is a source and means for social life and community bonding. Contemporary Bharatanatyam choreographies include both male and female dancers. In cinema Padam Bharathamam Tamil Dilana Mahanambal Tamil Salangai Ali Tamil Senthamurai Tamil, 1962. Mayuri, Telugu. Manichitrathazu, Malayalam, 1993. Topic. See also. Bhangra folk dance of Punjab. Chow dance, folk dance of Odisha. Garba folk dance of Gujarat. Kathak, classical dance of northern India. Kathakali, classical dance of Kerala Kachak, traditional Hindu dance of Bali, Indonesia Kuchipudi, classical dance of Andhra Pradesh Manipuri, classical dance from Manipur Mohiniyattam, performance art of Kerala Odissi, classical dance of Orissa Satriya, classical dance of Assam Yakshagana, performance art of Karnataka Notes <laughs>